Mixed morning. Data from the New Mexico Health Department shows COVID-19 infections among healthcare workers in the state have spiked as intensive care units remain full and nurses call for more protective equipment. The data shows 492 workers were diagnosed in May, marking a 219% increase from the 154 workers who tested positive as of April 21st. According to the Human Services Secretary, David Scrace, the increase was completely and totally expected and would normally just be a proportional number of cases. The Portales Municipal Schools Board of Education will hold its monthly school board meeting today at 1 p.m. Among the agenda items, board members will hear plans for off-season sports workouts that Portales High School will implement once the New Mexico Activities Association allows workouts for June 15th. Elite Communication will be closing the westbound curb lane at 7th Street and Martin Luther King, the eastbound curb lane on 7th Street, and the northbound right lane on Martin Luther King Boulevard throughout the day today from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Thursday, June 4th, state police officers were called to assist the Roswell Police Department with an incident in which an individual who was later identified as Luis Ghana of Roswell had assaulted a Roswell police officer and stolen the officer's patrol vehicle. The stolen police vehicle was pursued through the streets of Roswell by the Roswell Police Department. Ghana drove the stolen vehicle recklessly into oncoming traffic and avoided several attempts by law enforcement to utilize tired deflation devices. The pursuit continued southbound on U.S. Highway 284 towards Artesia. At about mile post 77 on U.S. Highway 285, Ghana drove the stolen police vehicle head-on into a silver Dodge pickup truck traveling north. The Roswell police officer that was assaulted was treated and released with minor injuries. The female victim that Ghana struck was the sole occupant of the Dodge pickup truck and was treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Ghana was airlifted to an El Paso hospital with what is believed to be non-life-threatening injuries he sustained in the crash. State police has charged Ghana with aggravated battery to a police officer, aggravated fleeing of a police officer, and unlawful taking of a motor vehicle. Soil health, as defined by a team of researchers in the College of Agricultural Consumer and Environmental Sciences at New Mexico State University, is the state of the soil being in sound physical, chemical, and biological condition, having the capability to sustain the growth and development of land plants. Rajan Gamir, a cropping system agronomist at the Agricultural Science Center in Clovis, put it more simply. Healthy soil leads to healthy human beings. But soil degradation is becoming a growing concern. Worldwide, cropland, forestland, grassland, and rageland areas are declining in productivity due to degrading soil, according to the United Nations. If left unaddressed, soil degradation may affect food production systems that feed the human population. There has been an increasing demand from stakeholders to know more about soil health. This demand has led NMSU to increase research and extension efforts on soil health assessment and management. Voter turnout in this week's primary election blew past historical averages in New Mexico, reaching 40 percent and still climbing, according to unofficial results. The Albuquerque Journal reported the raw number of ballot casts, more than 401,000, is a record for a primary. Turnout measured as a percentage of eligible voters was also incredibly high, 40 percent or six points higher than in 2016 and 15 points higher than in 2012. The surge in turnout came amid a public health crisis that erupted in March and in recent days, civil unrest and protests against police brutality. Brian Sanderoff, president of Research and Polling Incorporated in Albuquerque, said an influx of absentee ballots played a role in the increased voter turnout. Earlier this year, the state Supreme Court ordered election officials throughout New Mexico to mail absentee applications to every eligible voter before the election, a directive that came after a legal clash over how to conduct an election during the pandemic. U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue announced that the U.S. Department of Agricultural Farmers to Families Food Box Program has distributed more than 5 million food boxes in support of American farmers and families affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Regular updates to the number of food boxes distributed will be posted on the USDA's Agricultural Marketing Services website. On April 17th, Secretary Perdue announced the program as part of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program developed to help farmers, ranchers, and consumers 
consumers in response to the COVID-19 national emergency. In under 30 days, the program contracted for $1.2 billion in food products, including $461 million in fresh fruits and vegetables, $317 million in a variety of dairy products, $258 million in meat products, and $175 million in a combination box of fresh produce, dairy or meat products, and began distribution of the food boxes across the United States on May 15th. Less than three weeks later, over 5 million food boxes have been distributed to families in need while providing much-needed support to critically impacted agricultural sectors. 